Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek, welcome back to the channel. This is the second time I've tried recording this video, the uh, file was corrupted or whatever there at first, so hopefully I can remember everything and say it whatever, as I wanted to. I think it was stated pretty well in that last take, but anyway. This is a review of Hocus Pocus 2, or, or my thoughts on it at least, a reaction to it or whatever. I'm not really going through uh, element by element and reviewing, now this actor played this and this is the, you know, the way the story, I'm not really going through that. Other people have done that quite well, and I think even... Um, <clears throat> in keeping with my opinion on it overall, have done that nuts and bolts. So what am I talking about? Well, first of all, let me uh, say a few things. I wasn't going to see this movie at all at first because I've read some of the, or I've seen some of the books, you know, kind of gone through a little bit of the books that were written because it took them so long to give us this sequel that uh, in the books are just like, no, they take the, the, the angle on, you know, hey, let's, let's, let's examine the challenges the Sanderson sisters has to take as women and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's very much along those lines of, um, you know, well, Maleficent was just wronged by a man. Well, Ursula is actually a sympathetic villain because of men in her life. You know, is that, is that kind of take? And I saw a movie being made in today's climate and thought, ah, eh, not pass. Um, that is pretty much what the movie is, just to tell you that. It's not an exact um, incarnation or adaptation of one of those books, but that is what the movie is. It's garbage. The first movie was great. The first movie resonated so with so many people and stuck in the in the public consciousness for so long because it was archetypically a good fairy tale. It did the work that a fairy tale should do. The witches are evil. They're bad guys. They have a deal with the devil, with Satan, of all things. They're bad guys. Now, they're not scary, horrible monsters because it's a children's movie, so they're funny. They're fun to watch on screen, but they are the bad guys. That was There was no bones about that. You weren't supposed to sympathize with them or be sad for them in any way. Um, that's the hook. That's what everybody tries to defend this new movie is just loving, loving, loving. Of course you love that because that's the narrative that people want today, which is, you know, well, even women who are bad are still kind of good because they're women, you know, and... um. It gets worse. It gets worse. But anyway, that first movie was great. And one of the the seminal themes of that first movie was the importance of protecting those who are weaker than you, right? The Sanderson sisters don't protect. They prey on people who are weaker than them. They try to suck their uh, their youth, you know, from the children for self-serving reasons. The, the real theme of the movie was to serve others, use your strength. For the male characters, that was about Max's masculinity, right? Max's growing up was to, and he learned this from his little sister, and he learned this from his uh, girlfriend or would-be girlfriend, um, and he learned it from Binks, the young man who had been turned into a cat, you know, back in the old day, that you're there to protect those weaker, protect your little sister and so forth. And Binks was a great character. Um, and then you had the great character of the little sister. I mean, it wasn't just a man's movie by any means, you know. You had wonderful female characters, the little sister, the... um. The, the, again, the girlfriend, I forget the name, Heidi, no, I don't know how they say that. Anyway, I'm probably uh, forgetting the name there. But, uh, but yeah, great, great, uh, male and female characters there in the, in the leads. And it really did teach a great lesson. It did what a fairy tale should do, which is why it's resonated so much in our consciousness. It's why people growing up remember that so well. They remember that experience they had. Even if they've become different people now, the types of people who can't really appreciate that anymore. And, and I'll talk about that too in a second. So the original was great. The the remake doesn't necessarily have to have, you know, male characters in it, but it's it's more than that. It's a it's we don't we can't have any male leads. If they're males in this movie, they're idiot, they're adults, they're um, you know, evil or whatever. In fact, we're gonna have the Sanderson sisters, we're gonna try and create some empathy and sympathy for them. We're gonna get some of their backstory, and then we're gonna try and make you more invested in them, which doesn't work on a writing level at all. Uh then is there is their main characters as the girls, you know, where they've got three young women and one of them is even a witch, you know, and you've got this whole thing about witchcraft, yeah, you know, witchcraft, whatever. No, witchcraft. This is this is fairy tale witchcraft. This isn't your neighbor who might practice Wicca or whatever. That's a pagan religion, whatever. I'm not into it, but it's it's uh it's it's a thing and it's not the witchcraft of fairy tales. Sometimes Wiccan um practicers try you know try to say that and it's not. It's simply not. The witchcraft of fairy tales goes back to the witchcraft of, uh, you know, the, the deal with the devil, you know, the, uh, the, the, all of that kind of stuff. That's what, that's where it comes from in the fairy tale. So the, the witch is someone who has made the deal with Satan or, or is a witch in some other, you know, rules of the fictional universe or whatever. And that's exactly what the Sanderson sisters were. That's what they were established as in that first movie. You can't ask us to be invested in them now and care about them and so forth in the way that we would, you know, a main character. It's ridiculous. And yet, you're going to hear from people, oh, this movie's better than the original. Oh, this, you know, um, uh, we watched it with my family, and we, we liked it even better than the first one. My kids couldn't even watch the first one, but they loved this one. 
well, that says something about your child's, you know, flea-like attention span, letting them go on TikTok all the time. That, that's not... That's not any reflection on the movie. It's a reflection on your bad parenting. Uh, and then you've got people who, who champion this who, you know, are more often than not, not all of them, of course, and I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking of people that I know, and I've seen their their social media posts and whatnot um, who love this movie, and they're coming after me because I dare criticize the movie. They're, you're going to see comments in this video before I get to blocking them or just, oh, piling on me and blah, blah, blah. How dare you criticize this movie? Because there's an insecurity. There's an insecurity out there about this movie. They know it's not very well done, but they want that narrative. They need that female empowerment narrative, so they're really trying desperately to silence anybody who would speak out against this movie. We saw this with Ghostbusters 216. Uh, we saw it with other films, too, just like that. So that's the, that's the issue here at play. Uh, if they're that insecure, then there's probably an issue in the movie. But I am seeing it does kind of become a demographic. Women... You know, not, I'm talking about the actual people who just go see it, you know, um, you know, normies or whatever, not, not professional movie critics. Of course, they're going to love this. They're right up into the agenda of, uh, of wanting to push this narrative even above story. But the types of people that I'm seeing, you know, post about it, just average, you know, friends, family, whatever, coming after me for not liking it. They're, they're women. They're, they're usually divorced at least once. Um, they're insecure. They're uh, about their bodies or about their jobs or about whatever. They're just like the prime pickings for this kind of female empowerment uh, predator story, predatory story, which is what it is, you know. Um, that's why people like Captain Marvel. Th those who did actually like Captain Marvel, it's it's a, it's a demographic. You can you can just peg them down to the to the specifics, stereotype them right in there. That's exactly the kind of people that champion this movie. And they're trying to argue and they're trying to say things like this is even better. Well, no, if you say this is even better than the first movie, that's saying something about you. It's saying that. The themes of that first movie, the way that first movie was, can't resonate with you anymore. You're not the kind of human being that that can resonate with anymore. Now you just want to be told that you're good. You just want to be told that you're worthy of of, uh, of sympathy and investment. You just want to be told that's not what stories are supposed to do. That's not what hero stories are supposed to do. Our fairy tale stories, our stories of villains and heroes like this or whatever. It's not what those stories are supposed to do. Now I'm I'm being painting with a broad brush, I know, and I'm, and I'm being sort of, uh, you know, somewhat generalized and stereotypical there, but there's truth to it nonetheless. That doesn't cover everybody who likes this movie or everybody who would try to shout me down or defend it. But I do see that desperate need. Please tell people that this movie's great. Please tell people that this movie's great. Why? Tell people to watch the movie. And if the movie's truly great and they think it's great too, then they'll go tell people. You don't need to beg them just after watching or reading your social media post or whatever to go tell people it's great. That's an insecurity, right? And it, it falls to this, and I'll end with this. Um, well, there's a couple things I want to mention. Uh, storytelling is not about your opinion. It's not about what you like versus what somebody else is likes, and that's just all that matters. No, that's taste. Storytelling's a craft. It's a craft just like carpentry is a craft. You wouldn't stand on a deck that somebody made which is tilted, unlevel, it's got huge gaps that you almost just stepped through and fell down in. You wouldn't stand on that deck and say, well, I like it. I, I'm sorry that you don't like it, but I think it's a good deck. I like it. No, that's stupid. It's a poorly made deck. Objective truth. Yet you have idiots all the time coming in about stories. Well, I liked it, so I think it's a good story. I think it's a good story because I liked it. Screw what you like. No one cares what you like. Your like and your dislike has zero bearing on whether this story was well-crafted, whether it's an objectively good story or a poor story. And and Hocus Pocus 2 is a poor story. It is a poor story. It's poorly written. There's no investment in the characters unless you're looking for that female empowerment already, or unless maybe you're, it, does, it does depend on nostalgia. Uh, it's poorly paced. The uh, Even the main characters, the young girls, are you know who kind of cares about them, it's just poorly done. It really does depend solely on nostalgia, um, the performance of the three main actresses. Now, they're all still very fine actresses, despite what I might think about their own agendas and personal, uh, you know, uh, whatever. They're still fine actresses, and, and they do a great job, performance. But it really just kind of hangs on that and depends on that and depends on which is the common trope, you know, for these kinds of movies. You know, let's not worry about the quality of the story, the quality of the production or anything. Let's just worry about the um, either nostalgia in this case or the agenda that's in the movie so people will automatically push for the movie's success, try to bully and silence anybody who dares speak out against it because, you know, they need this movie to succeed for the narrative to succeed. So, uh, yeah, hot garbage this film. 
that's my take on it. But uh, I do not think it's a well-made film. It's objectively bad. I would even objectively bad. I would even say in terms of story making, storytelling. But uh, that's it. That's all I've got. I'll be back if all goes well. I'll be back with my monsters review tomorrow. So uh, until then, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the true, well-crafted fairy tale stories you love best. Thanks for watching.